there are very few games that have me collectively calling all gamers together, okay? We all gotta play this one. This one's really good. Most of the time, I usually recommend a game to you guys based on other games that you play that are similar to it and different aspects of that, but High on Life released this week, and this is just straight up a must-play title. I won't be spoiling anything past the first hour or so of the game, but I will be discussing why this game is so swagged out and fun. So if you're on the edge of picking up this game, in this video, I'm gonna explain to you some of the things I really enjoyed about the game and showing you some examples of that. Firstly, let me start out by saying, obviously, the game is not very similar to other games I've played, as while it has many great features from different games I've played before, it's hard to pinpoint where, say, the inspiration for the game mainly came from. I'd like to compare the game to a mix of Beyond Good and Evil, as well as Doom. The entire game and its universe does dark humor in a comedic way fantastically. There's not only a lot of creativity and a lot of new things that have been seen throughout the game, but as you play and you get to see all these different funny moments and awesome interactions, happen it not only makes you appreciate the game a lot more but also the entire universe that they built for it when a game starts off you're literally inside of a different game like it's supposed to be similar to old school doom you play this for the first couple minutes and then your sister enters a room and you now begin the game your sister sits down on your bed and tells you that your parents left on a trip so you have a house to yourselves this weekend Hey, hey, no, 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 not on my video. Your sister's pretty chill. She, like, immediately offers you some coke, which is pretty cool and immersive. So I decided to do a virtual bump, and then we are ready to leave the house. Now, that's when there's an alien ship. Oh, no, it teleports over there, and hey, this can't be good. It's all, these aliens all look gnarly crazy. They're speaking some weird language you can't understand, and all you can really do is just visually observe. There's a really funny moment where an old man on a scooter approaches the giant monstrous alien, and the alien just grabs him and literally starts smoking him. Martha, is that you? Oh my god! Oh my god. What did they just do to Mr. Pilfrey? <laughs> oh god. Did you just smoke him? The blog guy shoots a blue alien and then all hell just starts to break loose. You hear something screaming nearby, which actually happened to be the alien's gun. And I gotta say, that's one of the other highlights in this game. You always have a companion or a funny sidekick at your side. You get a lot of different alien guns in this game, which all have different appearances, skills, and uses. But most importantly, they all have their own personality that will commentate during your adventure. Sorry about the spit. I, I, I needed to get you infected with the translator microbes. That, that, that's sort of how it works. My name's Kenny. I'm a Gatlian. Uh, we, we gotta kind of, we gotta oh, move. What is it? Is it talking to you? Maybe we should go back to the Ignore house. Ignore her. It's very important that you listen to everything I say. I'm kind of a gun and if you don't use me to kill those G3 grunts, you, you know, they're gonna fucking kill us. Oh shit. Fuck yeah, there we go. You can always turn this down if you don't like it, but personally, I love hearing the guns yell stuff when we're fighting. It's just silly and sweet. The guns will also do stuff like talk to NPCs or interact for you in the game. So it's hard not to get detached to any of these guys once you start picking them up and having fun with them. Now since the gun is super chill and he wants to help you so, well, he doesn't die as well. He tells you to go around shooting a bunch of aliens and then you gotta grab a warp drive. That way we could go back home and warp to an alien planet. As currently the aliens are trying to take over so that they can use humans as, well, literal drugs and get high off of them. You are now officially the property of the G3 cartel. This game is super self-aware and in a great way. There's a lot of funny random moments that stood out to me at being top tier encounters. The best is during one of these levels, like in the middle of it, there's this uh, fisherman just fishing there. And he's just standing there and he's like talking out into the open waiting for you to talk to him. I got all this great information I could share. I'm just sitting here, fishing away, waiting for someone to come over and ask me stuff. I'm just gonna whistle to myself for a bit now. Till someone talks to me. Hello there, friend. Can I help you? One of my other favorite encounters happens shortly after you get to the alien city. There's this kid who's just talking shit, so you can keep on trying to shoot him. If you keep on clicking it, eventually your gun will do it. But what's even funnier than this is his mom who's just inside of a city. Oh, so it finally happened. Someone killed my son. Y your son? Yep. The kid up there who always calls everyone fresh meat. We are so sorry. Listen, don't get used to that. We're not killing any more kids. I'm drawing the line, so savor it. Enjoy it. It happened. Tuck it away in the old memory book. No, it's fine. He was 30 years old, so don't feel too bad. 
30 years old is still adolescence for our species, but it's not as bad as shooting like a five-year-old or something. So don't worry, you just did regular murder. And I warned him over and over. I said, don't sit up there calling strangers fresh meat or some gun-toting psychopath is gonna shoot you dead in cold blood. And you went and did it. Good for you. Anyway, please, just leave me to mourn. Jesus. Oh, my stupid, annoying son. I'll miss him a little bit. I'll miss him a very small amount. All of interactions you have with characters during and in between quests are some of the major highlights in this game. Like in most games, the fighting and combat would be the main focus. So usually when you end up getting to a spot in a game, you know, where you're stuck talking to someone for minutes on end, it's just exhausting. But in High on Life, I promise, it was not like this with any of the characters. I didn't want to miss a single character. Even random NPCs just sitting around or walking around, they always got something to say to you. And a lot of the time, it's very worth stopping. Some of you interactions are just amazing like imagine if i just kept running through the game i could easily miss that funny interaction with a dead alien kid's mom high on life is so good it stopped me from killing a hostage that was left after a boss battle technically all of us torgs are evil clones so i'm still gonna do a bunch of crap well, hey hey what are you doing uh, fuck cut it out you don't want three torg in charge trust me they're still a literal child oh all right i guess you're just gonna kill me oh, that sucks are you going to be okay if we just kind of leave you hanging up there? Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I can get down just fine. Hanging from ropes feels nice for my species. Hey, it's good for our backs. I'm, I'm actually the one who put myself here. All right, let's go home and turn in our first bounty. Now, when I went to kill her, her dialogue was just so good, I ended up having to spare her. I couldn't do it. She's too good. I need to see if she comes back later in the game. But that doesn't just mean that the dialogue is the only highlight. Like, the game itself, it plays like Doom or classic FPS shooter. You'll get quite a bit of health but you still need to use positioning and do things like take cover in order to prevent dying but there's also like three different difficulty options right now i'm playing on a normal mode and it's pretty challenging so far there's different upgrades you can unlock throughout the game that give you more combat abilities and alongside that all the weapons have these unique skills for in and out of battle so everything from the character interactions to exploring the maps to the fighting everything i gotta say is just pretty good all in all without spoiling too much more of the game it's amazing. I gotta say this game feels like a solid 9, maybe a 9.5 out of 10. The gameplay cycle with the boss battles in the game seems pretty decent. I mean, it's fun enough. It's cool to explore these maps, get the new upgrades and whatnot. But the whole thing that makes the whole package a great deal is just the characters that you're going to get inside of this game. And I bought this game for retail price at around $70 Canadian. Do I think it's worth that? Yeah, honestly, I do. I mean, you can probably get 20 to 30 good hours out of this game in a decent playthrough. And then on top of that, there's replayability. You can always go back and do different options that you didn't do before. Or just mess around. All in all, I really like this game. I recommend it 1000% to you guys. And I'd love to talk about the game some more. So I'll possibly do that in some more videos. But I don't want to spoil too much of it for this one. Anyways, though, I hope you guys understand now why you need to play High on Life. This is probably going to be like one of the sleeper hits of 2022, seeing as it just came out after Game Awards. If it came out before Game Awards, I wouldn't have been surprised if it would have been on there for one of the best games of the year. Let me know what you guys think of the game in the comment section below. Remember to like and subscribe as it always helps the channel and helps me get out of the hood. But as always, thank you all for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.